Uh, greetings again, um, everybody on uh, in the stream. And I just want to say it's great to be with you and have uh, this last chapter of Romans uh, today. Because well, I won't be streaming again until Monday. And today here in New Zealand, it's Thursday night. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Unlikely to be any streaming. Okay, so we come through all the way through Romans to this last chapter. The last chapter also has some instructions for Christians a little later, but it ends here with the greetings. So let's go back to chapter 15 and get the context. Uh, you remember chapter 15. Um, was that it, the Apostle Paul was heading for Jerusalem to bring the gifts that the, the, the Gentile churches were giving to them because the Gentile churches had, of course, received the, the message of the gospel through the Jews. Uh, salvation was of the Jews, as Jesus said. So now we've got um, uh, the Apostle finishing in chapter 16 with his greetings a good place to have a a division of chapters so here he says i commend to you phoebe our sister who was a servant of the church in sancria that you may receive that you may receive her in the lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of you for indeed, she has been a helper of many, and of myself also. I would say it's likely that Phoebe was with those who brought this letter to the Romans in the first place. So she's arrived, and she's in need of certain things. Not sure what they were, but it was obviously had to do with something that the church needed. Perhaps she was doing things that are, are, are typical of, I'm going to bring you into that, guys, sorry. Perhaps she was doing things uh, that are typical of uh, deacons. Deacons look after the practical business of the church, and she would have been maybe acting in the, that role. Um, the scriptures talk about males as deacons. But um, that doesn't mean that the sisters don't do that work as well, even if they don't get the name. So she had some business, and the Apostle Paul was saying, assist her with that. She's been a helper of many and of myself also. And, of course, you've got other, other women uh, that Lydia, for example, a seller of purple. She was a businesswoman. Um, others, even during Jesus' ministry, would support him uh, through their financial ability. For example, um, there was uh, the wife of Herod Stewart, who would have been fairly wealthy, and other women who would assist because uh, because they had the means to do so. So it's not that the women aren't always hidden in the background. In this case, she's the first one that uh, the Apostle Paul mentions in his greetings to the people in Rome. So let's read on. So, greet Priscilla and Aquila, and we know about them from the book of Acts, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. It's these two, husband and wife, uh, by all accounts, um, who took Apollos aside. Apollos was a powerful preacher, but all he knew was the baptism of John. So they took him aside and uh, explained more fully what Christ Jesus had done. And so he was a tremendous help to the church, but just needed to have that unpacked. And Priscilla and Aquila did that. They took him aside to explain that more fully. Wonderful couple. Uh, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risked their own necks for my life. 
to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, uh, so a Priscilla and Aquila um, must have been there in Rome or <clears throat> uh, one of the Roman churches there uh, at the time. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. So, uh, yeah, the teaching would have gone forth from the church there. Uh, greet my beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits, in other words, the, the first one who received Christ, of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much with us, for us. Of course, Mary is a very, very common name throughout the Roman world at that time. Which Mary that was, we're not sure. Or if she's even mentioned in any of the rest of the Bible, we're not sure. But after this, not many here have we heard of, and this is the first and last time we will hear of them, like uh, greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who were also were in Christ before me. Uh, it's interesting. This is where the 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 word apostle is used uh, for those who are sent out. It's a it, it's not the twelve apostles that Jesus had at the start, or the eleven after Judas hung himself. Judas fell from grace. Uh, no, these are others who have been sent out, and I would say these two were sent to Rome, most likely. They were in Christ before the Apostle Paul. Um, so, of note among the Apostles. And praise the Lord for these people. Likely they uh, also had a church in their home or were part of the church in the home of Priscilla and Aquila. Greet uh, Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ. Stach Stachus. Uh, my beloved, greet uh, Apelles, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household Ar of Aristobulus. Greek Herodian, greet Herodian, big your pardon, of Greek Herodian. Greet Herodian, my, my countrymen. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Notice these names uh, appear, many of them, in Greek mythology. So when they were raised in... Uh, in their own homes before they ever became Christians, uh, many of these would have got the names of Greek uh, gods or, or names from Greek mythology. So Narcissus, of course, um, loved his own reflection so much that uh, the gods changed him. I think they changed him into a flower, didn't they? Narcissus, the flower that, uh, that looks at itself, sort of bends over and looks at itself, so to speak. Uh, wonderful little stories, but of course, uh, uh, nonsense uh, as far as uh, actual history is concerned. Greet, uh, greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, who have laboured in the Lord. Greet beloved Persis, who laboured much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. So he's considering, considering Rufus's mother uh, as a mother to him as well. Uh, greet uh, Asyncritus, Phlegon, Phlegon, not Phlegon, uh, Hermas, Patrobus, Hermes, there's another common one, they thought that uh, Paul was Hermes, uh, Hermes is uh, Greek and uh, Mercury I think is the, is the Roman or vice versa, um, would have been vice versa. Uh, the, the the messenger, the one who speaks, and they thought Barnabas was Zeus, chief god. Anyway, Hermes named after that particular uh, a god of mythology, and the brethren who are with them greet Philologus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Isn't it wonderful to, to, to have someone who is amazingly 
dedicated to the Lord's work and to prayer for all the saints. You take a look at at, uh, at Paul's um, letters to all of them. He tells them, I don't cease to pray for you. And this was the Apostle Paul. Even though he was so busy, and sometimes busy writing because he was in prison, but he never ceased to pray. And he would have known these names from letters, no doubt, that others sent to him. And he would have been praying for them. Greet all of these guys. Yeah. And he knows their names. He knows them by name. Praise God. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. In those days, it was with a holy kiss. Nowadays, with a warm handshake uh, is the way we greet one another. Um, okay, the churches of Christ greet you. Or we also greet with a hug, sometimes a kiss. Depends on the, uh, the culture. Now, I urge you, brethren, Note those who cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. We as Christians, we can dwell together very amicably. As I said on the last chapter, I meet together with four other guys, and we are more mature guys in the Lord. But I would say there's no one of us that totally agrees on everything with another. And that could, if we allowed it, cause division. But we don't allow that. We might discuss various viewpoints uh, and bring in scripture uh, to, to the question or to support what we think is the correct one. But we do not allow divisions among us. We keep the main thing the main thing the main things, the main things. And, and one of those is how do we draw closer to Jesus Christ? How do we become more Christ-like? How do we draw closer to our Heavenly Father? Um, although he's not far from any one of us. How can we walk and step with the Spirit on a more consistent basis? Yeah. We don't go causing divisions. Uh, in in, in uh, Proverbs, the Lord says there's, well, Solomon says, there's seven, there's six things the Lord hates. Seven are an abomination to him. Yeah. Hands that are swift, quick to, swift, to, to, to shed innocent blood, that, that kind of thing. But the very last one, the seventh, it's an abomination to God, is the, the one who sows seeds of discord among the brethren. Discord is bringing divisions and offences. That's something we must and cannot do. Uh, cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. Yeah, we've, we've got to avoid that kind of person. Or we should at least correct them. And if they continue in it, say, look, I can't talk to you, not while you've got this attitude. Let's read on. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. They're doing it to their own ends, you see, the ones he's talking about here. For your obedience has become known to all. That's obedience to Christ. That's not obedience to Paul. Therefore, I'm glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple or innocent concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. <laughs> Jesus has already crushed Satan under his feet. But... We, when we take a stand for Christ, the enemy has to submit to the name of Jesus. And he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, let's read on. Here's more greetings from Paul's friends. Timothy, my fellow worker, calls Timothy my son in the faith. But he calls him my fellow worker here. And Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my countrymen, greet you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. That doesn't mean Tertius received it from the Lord. No, he wrote it as the Apostle Paul dictated. Tertius may have been trained up as a scribe. He certainly knew how to write. I would say Paul also learned how to write. Uh, after all, he was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel, uh, who was the, the greatest teacher in that time, it seems. But perhaps something was holding the apostle from writing. Perhaps it was his thorn in the flesh. We just don't know. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, my host and the host of the whole church, greet you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greet you. Now that's quite key. There are people that are in high places that are Christians. Uh, the, the leader of the synagogue. Was that Thessalonica? No, it was Corinth. Believe uh, he had become a Christian, and he was still the head of the synagogue, the leader in the synagogue. So the, there's different people. Um, for example, Sergius Paulus, he was the uh, proconsul on the island of Crete. Came to know Christ. So it's it, it's people in high places also. But it's not many. The apostle says, you, you notice, my brethren, that it's not many, any great or noble or, you know, uh, uh, people that, that uh, uh, no, God is calling the weak things, those uh, the things that are despised, the people that are despised to come to you. And we find exactly the same, actually, in, in, in countries where there is a distinction. In India, uh, the gospel spread really quickly uh, among uh, the lower castes, uh, particularly in the south. And uh, you've got 90% of Christians uh, in India living in those regions in the south, and only 10% further up north, where the, the higher caste of Indians tend to be. <clears throat> okay. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you, and Cortus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. He's repeating himself there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So this one is from Gaius and these ones who say the same thing. And now in verse 25. The apostle again takes the uh, verbally takes the pen once again. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. Yes, amen. To him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. It's the gospel that the apostle Paul received directly from heaven, directly from God. He didn't go to anybody else. To receive the gospel, this was straight from above. And him who is able to establish you as our heavenly Father, uh, according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, and for good reason, because the Bible tells us that if the princes of this world had known what would happen, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, because they were bringing about their own demise. Satan and his angels, well, very much like the book of Narnia with uh, Aslan and the wicked witch, thinking to herself, now I've killed the son of the emperor over the sea, 
Narnia will be mine forever. I'll kill all the all the rabble that were following Aslan, and then I'll own this territory forever and ever. Little did she realize that um, that he would come back to life again. It's a parallel, of course, if you know the story of Narnia. Narnia it's, it's simply a parallel because C.S. Lewis was a Christian of what the Lord has done. Yeah, if the if the if they'd known what what would happen when Christ was was killed, they would not have beg pardon, they would not have crucified the Lord of Glory. But it had to happen. It was necessary. <clears throat> it was necessary for Christ to die, so that our sins could be forgiven. Do you understand that? If our, our if Christ had not died in our place because it was an innocent man that was put to death. Uh, it could have been Barabbas. Barabbas could never have paid for our sins. Barabbas was a a, a murderer that uh, that was a leader of an insurrection. Uh, and Pilate said, "Guys, do you want uh, you Jews? Do you want me as I do every every year? Do you want me to release to you Barabbas or the King of the Jews? Barabbas, what will I do then with the King of Jews? Crucify him." So they they wanted a murderer released to them, as it says in Acts chapter 2. And they killed the king of glory. But as I say, that was necessary. It was needed that that would happen. Why? Because the wages for sin is death. And we would have been cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death, which is what it's talking about there. We would all, the whole of humanity, all except Jesus himself, who was perfect, all of us, the Bible says, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So Jesus paid our wage. Jesus paid our wage. Yes. So the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. Way back when Adam and Eve took of the fruit, disobeying God and the first sin, Came upon our earth. Ever since then, there's been a promise. When God spoke to Adam and then Eve, and last of all the serpent, he said to Eve, Your offspring, your offspring will crush the serpent's head, but the serpent will crush your offspring's heel, bruises heel. Talking about the Lord Jesus. Here, Jesus' heel was crushed. Why wasn't it his head? Because he rose again. Died, we commemorate that on Good Friday, rose from the dead, and we commemorate that on Easter Sunday. And then we have a holiday on Easter Monday, just uh, for good measure. But the Monday, that doesn't hold significance. Christ rose again the first day of the week. Praise God that he did. So his heel was bruised. He still has the marks in his hands and his feet, the Bible tells us. They look upon him whom they pierced. Marks on his hands and his feet and the spear thrust into his side. Yes, we will look upon him whom we pierced through our sin. <clears throat> it was necessary that, that Jesus would die for us. And that was the mystery. Mystery. Christ in us now. The mystery is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we are not righteous in and of ourselves. I know that daily, and you should know that daily as well. No. What does it say? God took the sinless one, the Lord Jesus Christ, and made him to become sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. How? In him. In Christ, we are his body, he is the head, the body and the head. And that's talking about, um, that's talking about uh, us as a church. The church isn't a building, guys. The church is the people. Us as believers being in him, just like it says uh, as far as our, as our baptism is concerned. Don't you know that when you were baptized, you were baptized into Christ's death? 
See, you went under the water, baptized into his death and his burial. That's what it represents. You're just not kept under there long enough to die yourself physically. But it does represent dying to that old nature of yours, the one that willfully sins. That's what the death is referring to. You've been baptized into Christ's death. Just so, just as Christ rose from the dead, you might also walk in newness of life. Anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. So this revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began is the gospel. It wasn't made clear. And Satan didn't know that he was bringing about his own destruction and he was bringing about the release of untold millions of, uh, of people who were caught in his net because our, our first parents uh, sinned and sin came upon all flesh because all have sinned. Now, but now made manifest, you see, the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now has been made manifest. That meant it has been revealed and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. Hallelujah. It's gone to all nations uh, and more so even today than before. Matthew 24 says um, this gospel of the kingdom must go to all nations, uh, to all people. Uh, as a witness to them, and then comes the end, the end when our, our Saviour comes to earth, when our Saviour returns. And that uh, that word to all people, to all ethnos. So it's almost there, guys. It can't be that far away before all ethnic groups have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. Yes, this mystery is for the obedience of, of, to the faith. Um, that's the purpose of it, that we might be have faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, that we our sins are forgiven, done away with, and we are made right and clothed in the righteousness of God that comes through the blood of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, no remission of sins. And Jesus himself has paid for our sins through the shedding of his blood. All right, to God alone wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. What a benediction. Let's read it through again. Now to him who is able to establish you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. Amen. But now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures, it was all prophesied beforehand, made known to all nations, according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith, to God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for staying with me. And uh, our next, where we're heading now, is to 1 Corinthians. Um, I, I really love having you guys on board and being able to share and open up the word uh, to you all and, and just rejoice with you in what our Savior has done for us. Thanks once again. And God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend until we come back again together.